New from KTAL Records, 22 explosive hits. What? Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about a wonderful band that many of us already know, uh, and one of the most original quirky bands that came from the quote-unquote new wave post-punk era. That's right, I'm talking about XTC. Now, I always like to start these episodes out by telling you how I got into the band. And that was basically, I'd walk into Licorice Pizza and I'd see imports of uh, the a second album called Go To. And I thought it was a very interesting cover, but it didn't really tell me too much about the band. And then finally, when their third album came out in the U.S., it was really the first U.S. release, uh, I picked it up right away because it had a cool cover and I was you know, just buying anything that seemed like it was really cool. I took it home and oh my gosh, my mind melted, loved it so much. And I remained a fan uh, even up to this day. But after all that's been said and done, let's go back to the beginning. We're going to start with the first album, which came out in 1978, and it is called White Music. And this lineup featured Andy Partridge on guitar and vocals, Colin Moulding on bass and vocals, uh, Barry Andrews on keyboards and vocals, and Terry Chambers on drums. Very, very quirky album. This came after their first EP, which was called uh, Science Friction. And uh, actually, I believe that some of the bonus tracks are here as well. This is the expanded version. Uh, it's really a quirky album. It, it shows you that Andy Partridge is an incredible songwriter. Now, Colin Moulding wasn't quite as good in the early days. He was writing nice songs. They were really good. But boy, was he going to really start to blossom as a songwriter uh, on, on their third album. But anyway, White Music was the first album. XTC came out in 1978, the beginning of 1978. The end of 1978 comes that album that I was telling you about that I saw the cover that looked really interesting. This, like the first album, was produced by John Leckie. And this has Are You Receiving Me? But I don't think it was listed on the credits. Uh, but Go To is the name of that album. And that came out at the end of 1978. Very quirky. Uh, now, after that album, keyboardist Barry Andrews left the band. And he was replaced by a guitar player by the name of Dave Gregory. Now, Barry Andrews actually went off and formed a band called Shriekback. And they've put out a lot of... Of really really cool interesting things so that third album I was telling you about was called drums and wires when I put this on and I was hearing things like making plans for Nigel and helicopter and uh, life begins at the hop and all these songs I, my it was just amazing because they were strange and they were weird and they were eccentric but they were so full of beautiful melody and uh, this is a version that has bonus tracks on it and drums and wires is really the album that uh introduced me to the music and the majesty of xtc then i went back and i bought the first two albums after that uh because they were only imports so i had to save up a little bit you know my allowance or my jack-in-the-box money or you know wherever i was at that point in my life now the interesting thing about xtc is they had really good chemistry with the first two albums with barry andrews but the chemistry of all four band members really came together on Drums and Wires. There's also a Stephen Wilson remix of Drums and Wires. And you get the stereo mix and the uh, 5.1 remix. And you get bonus tracks and everything. And that is really my starting point. What I've noticed a lot about XTC is your love of their particular catalog depends on your entry point. Uh, so I really love uh, this album and the next few albums. A lot of people got into them on Skylarking. A lot of people got into them on Oranges and Lemons. And that's really their favorite albums and stuff. But the reason I love this early stuff so much is because that's really when I was first introduced to the band. Now, the next album was another fine album. Now, that one and this one were produced by Steve Lillywhite. And he really left his mark. Another great album. This is called Black Sea. And this has things like uh, Generals and Majors and uh, Respectable Street, Towers of London. And this is a version with bonus tracks. I believe that most everything I have are the Ape House reissues, which is the label that uh, Andy Partridge set up uh, a few years ago. Uh, and he's been reissuing the XCC catalog. Now, I also have the Stephen Wilson remix of Black Sea, which has the stereo and 5.1 and loads of other bonus things on there. You should definitely check that out. Now, my favorite XTC album is English Settlement, an incredible work. Not only does it surpass the majesty of what has come before, it builds upon it. It's produced by Hugh Padgham, and there's such a 
density to the sound. It's such bigger and more emotional than before. And you know they're they're, they're frantic and and crazy and and eclectic on uh, the earlier albums, but here they just displayed such a maturity. And it has great songs such as uh, "Senses Working Overtime." And uh, Jason and the Argonauts, Snowman, Ball and Chain, No Thugs in Our House, uh, Fly on the Wall. Uh, so many, many great songs. Now, here's the thing. When the album came out in the UK, it was a two LP album. When it came out in the US, it was a single LP album. They removed, I believe, four songs. Now, in my opinion, they're four of my favorite songs of the album, uh, including uh, Down in the Cockpit, uh, Knuckle Down, and Fly on the Wall. Uh, but this is an incredible album. But you have to get uh, the full tracks. I mean, every CD version has had the original track listing. But if you're out there searching the wild for the vinyl and you come across a 10-track version of it that's not the complete album, uh, it's still worth your time. But uh, English Settlement, my favorite XTC album. Now, after that album, Terry Chambers left the band. And remember I was talking about chemistry a little while ago? Boy, that chemistry changed. Andy Partridge, Colin Moulding, Dave Gregory, incredibly gifted musicians. And of course, Colin and uh, Andy were gifted songwriters. But the, you know, the, 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 the urgency, the energy, something within the band's chemistry changed when Terry Chambers left. Uh, and out comes the album Mummer. And this came out in 1983. And this sort of takes on some of the aspects of English Settlement, but it's not as full, rich, and pastoral. Uh, but still, some really great songs on here, like Great Fire and Love on a Farm Boy's Wages and uh, Lady Bird. And uh, this was produced by Steve Nye and Bob Sargent. Bob Sargent had been responsible for producing some great records around that time, including the first Haircut 100 album. 1984, out comes The Big Express. This is probably my least favorite XTC album. Uh, and I apologize to the band and I apologize to fans of this album. There are some great songs on it, such as All You Pretty Girls and uh, This World Over and Wake Up. But generally speaking, this is not my favorite XTC album. It's still one that you need to have in your collection because you need to have all the XTC albums in your collection. But this one, it just didn't float my boat too much, to be perfectly honest. But then in 1985, they teamed up again with their original producer, John Leckie, and they put out an album called 25 O'Clock. It's actually an EP. And it was them under the pseudonym, The Dukes of Stratosphere. And it's a really psychedelic album. Uh, you know, they, they created it to sound like it could have come straight out of 67, 68. And it's really a wonderful collection. You know, it, it, you know instead of sound like the Beatles and things like that, it's, like I said, more psychedelic oriented. But there was more Dukes of Stratosphere to come in the future. But until then, they followed that up with one of XTC's most famous albums, Skylarking, which was produced by Todd Rundgren. And talk about pastoral and wonderful and emotional and layered. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's, you know, Todd Rundgren's production. No, it's XTC songs. And, you know, there were locking heads in there. And there's that tension. And probably that tension brought a lot of emotion out. But, of course, this is the album. Now, originally... The song Dear God, which was a huge single for them, uh, that was a B-side. It was a B-side of a song called Grass, and it wasn't even included on the album. But when stations took that single Grass, switched it over and started playing Dear God, that song became huge. So like the second pressings of this album, they actually put Dear God on the album. But anyway, there's a lot of other great songs on there like Earn Enough for Us and uh, That's Really Super Super Girl, The Meeting Place and Grass, like I told you. And there is that Skylarking 1986, one of their most popular albums. Now, I sort of have to cen censor this cover here. Uh, they found out later that the uh, album, there was something wrong with the mix, like the wires were crossed, and they never really noticed it. So when they went back and they, you know, they fixed the polarity and they reissued the album with what the, was the original cover, which is a woman's private parts adorned with flowers and such. But it's the same tracks, but it's it sounds like a different mix. It sounds new and fresh. So you're definitely going to need both of those. Oh my gosh, by golly, you're also going to need the Stephen Wilson remix. And there's a stereo and a 5.1 there. And remember when I told you about Dukes of Stratosphere a little while ago with that 25 o'clock? Well, then they put out an album called Sonic Sunspot. And that has one of the greatest XTC-related pop songs ever called Vanishing Girl. Uh, and both of those releases, the EP and the album, can be found on CD. Now, of course, the, you know they list them as XTC as Dukes of Stratosphere. 
but you're going to be able to find that in stores and uh, you're going to be able to find such wonderful songs like I said Vanishing Girl Your Good Man Albert Brown and lots of other psych and uh, uh, late 60s influence pop sounds absolutely wonderful they took that whole idea of what they'd been doing you know going away from the quirkiness and then they embraced you know more of a guitar jangle pop sound especially on Oranges and Lemons which came out as a two record album and this was yet another hit for them uh, it has the song Mayor of Simple which was really big for XTC. But it's also got one of my favorites, uh, King for a Day, and it's got The Loving and um, Chalk Hills and Children, another fine, fine album by XTC. That came out in 1989. Oh my gosh, is there a Stephen Wilson remix of that too? With 5.1 and Surround and bonus tracks? Yes, there is. Now it took another three years, but out comes the album None Such. And this, again, was continuing uh, on the same line of Oranges and Lemons. A lot of the quirky edginess uh, was uh, sort of missing, but they were really focused on songwriting. Lots of great songs, big production. I mean, XCC were never trying to go commercial. Of course, I'm sure that they would have loved to have sold albums uh, or more albums than they actually did. Uh, but they were just maturing as songwriters and, and learning the ropes in the studio and learning what they could do, especially since they no longer had to tour. And that's what they'd been doing for the last uh, decade. Again, this album was produced by Gus Dudgeon and it's got Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead and The Disappointed, Wrapped in Grey, uh, Books Are Burning, uh, lots of really good songs in it. But you know what? There's also a Stephen Wilson remix. Stereo and 5.1. You know, and these things are also filled with like demos and stuff that, you know, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, they definitely give you uh, your money's worth. Now, they're having problems with their label, and they essentially stayed out of the studio for the next seven years. But they did return in 1999. Now, unfortunately, partially through the recording of this album, Dave Gregory left the band. But this is filled with wonderful songs. This is kind of like a, a, a sister album to the next album. This is more orchestral and has a lot of really wonderful complex songs uh, like Easter Theater and River of Orchids and Frivolous Tonight, a really fine album. The following year, they released the album Wasp Star, uh, Apple Venus 2, and this is the companion sister album to this. This is the orchestral, and this is the more, uh, you know, sort of a return to rock sound to them. And it's got things like The Man Who Murdered Love, Stupidly Happy, uh, In Another Life, Playground, uh, really another fine, fine album. But sadly, that was it. XTC was done after that. Colin has done some stuff and Andy has done some stuff. I won't focus on any of that. That's probably going to be for a different video. I didn't want to make this video too long, but that's all the studio albums. There's plenty of compilations out uh, by XTC. There's even like a BBC box set. I'm not focusing on any of the live recordings or BBC recordings, uh, but I will tell you a couple compilations, ones that I would highly recommend. Now, my favorite is Fossil Fuel, which is a two CD set uh, that actually covers the singles, all the A-sides from 77 to 92. And if you want to get into XCC, this is like the perfect gateway one. Look at all those songs on there. It's absolutely just a great collection. You definitely need that one if you're just starting out. Now, another couple that I want to show you is back when Go2 came out, uh, it came with a free EP called Go Plus. And that was Andy Partridge going to the studio, taking the existing recordings and creating dub versions of about... I don't know, four or five songs off the album. And that was included in early UK versions of the album Go To. Later on, I think it was after uh, Drums and Wires, uh, he released an album under the name uh, Mr. Partridge that had him remixing uh, more XTC songs or actually creating dub versions and, and, and creating like new songs entirely. You know, it wasn't like making plans for Nigel Dub. Uh, he would he would take backing tracks and create new songs out of the dubs. And that album by Mr. Partridge was called Takeaway, The Lure of Salvage. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because there was this XCC, sorry for the stickers on there, called Explode Together. And this contains both the Go Plus uh, dub EP and the um, Takeaway, The Lure of Salvage album on one disc. They are just dubs by Andy Partridge, but all the members of XCC on it. So it is technically an XCC album. The same time that that came out was another great compilation called Rag and Bone Buffet. And this was all rarities and B-sides and uh, non-album tracks. It's an incredible collection. It has Colin Moulding's solo single, 
uh, Too Many Cooks in the Kitchen that he released under the name The Colonel. It has the A and B side of their Christmas single, uh, Thanks for Christmas, that they released under the name Three Wise Men. And it has uh, B-sides to 12 inches. Now, a lot of this has come out on uh, you know the various remasters and stuff, but this is still really worth your while if you want to get the Christmas song and you want to get the Colonel single, uh, both A and B side, and some other odds and ends that have not appeared anywhere else. Now, finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is Coat of Many Cupboards. This is a box set, but it's not your typical box set where it's all album tracks and hits and B-sides. This has uh, you know unreleased studio versions, unreleased single recordings, uh, has some live on there, has demos, uh, it has working versions. It's really a, more or less a collection of rarities with hits uh, sprinkled in. And there's uh, a track list in there if you want to pause that. Uh, anyway, that is it with my video about XTC. Normally, I like to put medleys at the end of these videos, but I decided so many people know who XTC are uh, that I don't think that's really necessary. All right, all right. Okay, okay. So I'll put a medley here just under three minutes. Features just snippets of a bunch of XTC songs. There's no order, and I know that people are going to go, oh, you didn't put this song, or you didn't put that song. That's okay. This is just to show people what XTC sound like if you're you're not familiar with the band. Uh, so give this a listen, and I'll see you on the other side. We're only making plans for night you. We only want what's best for him. And I've got one, two, three, four, five. Since it's working overtime. Trying to first is pop. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I went through my XTC CD collection. This is just the studio albums. Like I said, there are other compilations and there are BBC sets, uh, including a box set and uh, so much more. Let me know what you think about XTC+. Plus. Oh, oh, before you leave, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me, I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.